Recording. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two one. one. Why are you being all... Like... She has a gray sweater. Oh, God. Anyways, guys. He does it. He didn't do it like he normally does it. What do you... Oh, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing? It is uh, Thursday night for us. Friday morning for you. Yep. And I pray that you guys are all having a really good morning, and you're going to have a good day, and you're going to have a good evening, and if you're not watching this the next Friday, then whatever day that you're watching it, that you're going to have an amazing day. Guys, real quick, I just want to remind you, most of you probably know that Saturday, we're going to have a Zoom class for, uh, Zoom is a video conferencing thing, for... Um, uh, how, uh, who are you? The Identity in Christ seminar. It's a seminar we've been doing for years in person at the church. We'll do it like twice a year yeah, usually. Yeah, and this is part two, you guys. Yeah, this is part two. So I sent out everyone that's on the list. You should have already gotten an email with the with the link to get into the room. And what about the what about the people who? Did you, were the, you able to respond to the ones who have not seen the first one so they can see the first one probably the on time? The email has the link to the first one already. Perfect. On. You guys, that's awesome. So that yeah. way you guys can watch that one, catch up. I will tell you that before you start it, make sure you have a notebook, you have a pen, you have your Bible handy, um, and you just go along with it. And you sent the PDF as well, right? Yeah. That's awesome, guys. I hope that you guys can print it out for this next one. I have heard from a few people that it has become easier for them to be able to read it physically as you're going through yeah. it than to have um, it on your phone and then you have to leave the Zoom and go back and be trying to read it at the same time in, in a yeah, computer or something. Yeah, better just to print it. Yeah, so it's better to print it. And I, I again, I want to really say that if you haven't seen the first one and this is the first time you're going to get in on it on Saturday, please... it's. It's going to be way better watching part two if you understand what we're talking about in part one or else it's going to sound, it's going to feel like you just walked into a movie in the middle of it and you're kind of lost. Amen. Um, one thing as well that we'd like to do is we'd like to um, send our condolences to um, somebody very dear to us, you know, our uh, assistant pastors, you know, at, at House Arrest Church, uh, our sister Lydia lost her brother. Yeah. this morning um and i just you know i'm just gonna ask that you guys as family all come together and we just uh we continue to pray for them and that we pray for all of the family and for just that peace and comfort during this time because it's never an easy time so you know i'm just gonna ask that we all come together collectively amen amen, amen. so guys um <clears throat> we had a lot going on today it was a yeah. busy day and uh, so we were all over the place. And um, we had some friends that came visiting us from Los Angeles. They're here now. And uh, so it got a little late on us because we've been fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't seen them in a few years, actually, right? Yeah, it's been about, what, two years, guys? Two years? Two years now, right? That's a few years. Yeah, two years. And for mm -hmm. me, I'm not used to that, guys, because... These are like, these, are, these to me, they're, they're my family. I have been, they've been in my life for a long time. How long now? Long time before we got married. Yeah, before, how long you guys been married now? 13 years. So it's been over, well over 13 years, guys. So they've been friends with me for a long time. He was a commander, one of my son's commanders um, when he was in Royal Rangers. And he's been involved in my children's lives and, you know, and then I have my sister who is like my sister, even though, you know, we're, we're, we don't see each other every day and everything, but you guys know that when you have such a closeness with, with somebody, it doesn't matter if you don't see them every day because you know, you're there in spirit and everything just continues on just like it was yesterday. So I love having them here and I'm trying not to look at her so she doesn't make me laugh <laughs> and I know she's trying not to, but I praise God for them that they're here um, so that we can fellowship together. Also, last year you guys got ordained? The last year, right? 2019? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ooh, congrats yeah. on that. So that's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> All right, guys. Um, Sharon mentioned a verse yesterday, but I didn't feel like talking about it. 
<laughs> but we're going to talk about it today. Yeah. Um, this verse sounds crazy because in the Amplified Translation. And, um, but, well, I'm going to read it in, in both. I'll read it in the New King James. Yeah. And then All right. we can read it in the this message. Sounds, so let's start with the one that we normally always do, yeah? Okay. Okay, so why don't you go so ahead So we're going to go to the um, book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 2. Amos is one of the minor prophets. He was actually, um, he, he bred sheep. Um, we don't know much too much about him, but the Lord gave him a word to warn Israel. And um, so it's a very short book. Uh, but nevertheless, every single book in the Bible is there for a purpose and a reason because there's something that God wanted to say and God spoke through this man. Even though he lived a very simple, humble life, God still spoke powerfully and warned Israel. And this is what's happening right here in this verse, okay? So um, it's Amos 3, 1, 2, but I'm going to start at 1. That way we, it goes smoother into the context of 2. And it says this, it says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. He's talking to Israel. O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right there, right? Mm -hmm. That's rough. Yeah. I'm going to read it in the Amplified too. And I'm going to read here. it in the message. Check this out. Amplified says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. I have known, chosen, cared for, and loved only you of all of the families of the earth. Therefore, I shall punish you for all your wickedness. Yikes. So in the message, it reads, listen to this, Israel. God is calling you to account. And I mean all of you. Everyone connected with the family that he delivered out of Egypt, listen. Oh, two as well, sorry. Out of all the families on earth, I picked you. Therefore, because of your special calling, I'm holding you responsible for all your sins. Man. See, it seems... Like, like a heavy verse. It seems like, man, God's mean. But he's reminding them, listen, you wouldn't even be in this position you're in if I hadn't saved you out of Egypt. So in, 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 he's like, and because I saved you out of everybody I could have chose to save, all these other people, I chose to save you. So now I'm going to hold you responsible for your sins. And that's kind of a, a verse that probably wouldn't be popular nowadays because everybody wants to blame everybody else and mm -hmm. pass the buck mm -hmm. you know but honestly like even though this is old testament old testament allows us to see the character of god and the way god is with people lets us know because we know that he doesn't change he's the same yesterday today and forever so when he the way he deals with those that he loves then what makes us think just because it's not politically correct no he deals with us in the same way today you know, um, and people will run and say, well, what are you saying he doesn't love us or this and that? Listen, I, I love my children and I've disciplined them because I love them. So in the same way, that's, that's what I'm hearing. He's like, he's reminding them. He goes, man, out of everybody that I could have chosen, I chose you. Yeah. So now that you're in your wickedness, I'm going to hold you responsible for that. Oh, I thought somebody was... Beat Street outside rapping or something. I thought somebody was getting beat up. Oh. Sorry. We I thought just... Run DMC was walking by. <laughs> so. we, we, just, we just had some noise right outside the door, uh. so we both just paused for a minute. <laughs> 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 oh, we're weird. So, um, but yeah, you know, this is... Um, I'm not sure why you picked that verse yesterday, but... Remember, I just kind of went through an yeah. and I just landed on it. Yeah. Um, it makes me, it reminds me of this, guys, is there's always going to be a balance. And, and in this day and age, sometimes it can't all be about God's love only. Because, see, that would be like saying a parent loves but doesn't discipline, but they discipline because they love. It causes this balance to happen. <clears throat> and without that, then, 
Like, if a parent would let their child do any old thing they wanted, you would have that ch- child taken from you. Yeah. Because even the government would say, you obviously don't care for this child because you let them do any old thing they want to do. So even the state, who is not Christian, would see that that is not loving the child. Yeah, that it's not so, incorrect. So yeah. before you're quick to say that God doesn't love us, because it sounds like he's mean here. Like he's being a little harsh. No, man. It, it, it's, he's just he's he's basically telling them straight up. Listen, if I didn't love you, you would have still been in Egypt. But see, that's the thing. I think that when the Israelites did step out and they did leave Egypt, um, from the get go, I think that there was just a lot of you know a lot of complaining, a lot of murmuring, a lot yeah. of you know, and and but uh, along through it all. Even when the manna came from heaven, you know, and he was teaching them, hey, only take what you need and not more than that. I think there was a lesson in everything that he did. And it's the same thing, like, you know, when he'd go forward and fight those battles and everything, he was saying, okay, the victory is yours. Now go in and conquer what's yours. So there was a a lesson in everything. But the thing is, is that they failed to see it. And I think it's the same thing now that Mm. there's always a lesson. Like he's always trying to show us something, but we miss the mark. We miss what he's trying to what he's trying to show us sometimes, yeah. and I think it's because we we lean on our own understanding instead of really truly listening to God's voice, yeah. you know. And I think that we do that a lot. It, it's something that, <clears throat> that that it comes natural and it really truly shouldn't because we should be relying on God's voice. You know, it makes me think of this. Like, for instance, what is wrong with being corrected by God? Like, what's wrong with that? I would love to be corrected by you know, God. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because he says it in Scripture that he chastises those that he loves. And be like, oh, bow, bow, Lord. You know, he yeah. chastises those that he loves. And so yeah. it's like, but I think what it is is that, like, I realized, like, what he's saying here. He goes, listen, out of all the families, I chose you. So I'm like, okay, how do I make that relevant to me? That would be like God telling me, listen, David. I need to correct you because I could have left you in your sin. I could have left you in your gangs and all your just dumb stuff that you were. I could have just left you there. I could have chose somebody else. It could have been somebody else preaching a house of rest. Because if you won't praise me, I'll cause the rocks to praise me. You know, so it's like he could have chose anybody else. He goes, but I chose you. Amen. So now I'm going to hold you responsible for your sins. Well, and there's exactly, nothing wrong with that. But that's exactly what it says right there. God is calling you to account. So if he's telling you to if he's calling you to account, that means you need to take accountability. There has to be that accountability as yeah. well. You know, so you have to take account for your actions as well. And I think that 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 kind of goes hand in hand when you said there has to be that balance, you know. Mm-hmm. So being able to to receive, being able to have a teachable spirit, being able to have all of that, because, man, I mean, like I said, we missed the mark and we got to just be have an open heart and ready to 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 be taught. So in the context of this, um, even though God said this to Israel, to Amos, to tell Israel, I mean, ultimately, um, God has always loved Israel. So it's not like he had hate for them. It's like, man, I saved you out of something and you you need to rise to the occasion of the freedom that you have. Mm-hmm. You are no longer bound to Egypt. And take what belongs to you. You're not bound yes. to that. And, and so us, that we've been... We're not bound to sin. We're not bound to the enemy. We're not bound to Satan. So it's like we need to rise above what we've been set free from. We have been set free. So it's like <clears throat> it's like um, back in the day, stories I heard historical speak, historically speaking, that when the, the African-Americans, when, when the Africans were freed here in America, a lot of them didn't know. They did not know until other freed slaves came and said, why are you working here in this, uh, what do they call them? Cotton fields or yeah, they're, in the fields? No, they're called something. I can't think Plantations? of what they're called. Plantation. Mm-hmm. Why are you here? And they're like, what do you mean? They're like, man, we're free now. So take that slave clothes off because you have been set free. And the same thing, Jesus said, the Bible says to take off our old man. 
and put on a new man. Take mm-hmm. off the slave clothes. Mm-hmm. So when exactly you, what we were speaking yeah, about in Ephesians. So guys. when you act like your old self, it's like you putting on the clothes of slavery when Jesus came to set you free. Amen. He's holding you responsible for your sins. That isn't you anymore. Quit acting like a slave. We have been set free. Mm-hmm. You know, all you got to do is read uh, Romans chapter 6. Yeah. That we are dead to sin. We have, yeah. we have, it's been buried. You know, so guys. And, and we resurrected with him. You know, it's, it's like, man, that's. That's exactly what we were speaking about in yeah. the in the Bible study yeah. the other day, about stepping into your new man. So you know, I think it's a beautiful thing when he says, "Man, out of everybody, I chose you." Yeah. You know, out of all the billions of people on this earth, he chose you. That that is a big deal. But but see, he chose he chose you because of your special calling. Yeah. You know, because you have a special calling. There's a purpose in your life. God didn't call anyone to to warm a pew. That scripture is not there. It doesn't say he called some to be prophets and pastors and teachers and a bench warmer at a church. Yikes. That's not in scripture. He, If he's called you, that means you have a calling because he has called you. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, like you said, out of all the families on earth, I picked you. Therefore, because of your special calling, I'm holding you responsible for your sins. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. You know, and... Um, He's I holding think, us accountable. Yeah. So I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a father in heaven that loves us. And when we, you know, when we lived wrong or lived a certain way, or we want to be rebellious in our in our walk in Christ, he has every right to bring it to our attention. In the, you know, in the same way a parent does a child. Yeah, and, and we gotta remember that there's so much meekness he has towards us because he has the power to destroy. He has the power to do whatever he wants, but yet then he just wants to love us anyways. And he holds us so meek meekly, you know, because we can be crushed at any moment, but he says, no, this is my daughter. This is my son. And he has something special for us. And he chooses to to hold us tight enough to where we know that we're being held by him, but yet lets us loose enough so that we can be able to walk forward and take a step forward in what it is that he's calling us to do. And, you know, there's a difference, and I want to kind of finish off with this. There's a difference when a father is abusive to their child for the sake of being abusive compared to discipline. Because the one that's disciplined will grow up and say, you know what, Dad? I get why you I did that. I, I guess I, I get why you did that. Because you were just trying to teach me to be a man. Yeah. You were just helping me set myself up to be successful in my life. So, so God is not punishing you to be cruel he corrects because he wants the best for us Amen. and and it's never done outside of love it's always done in love you know and, and i think there's nothing wrong with that you know me um giving my life to the lord while incarcerated um did i think he was mean because he didn't set me free like god you know you let peter out of jail come he didn't get me out of jail and, you know it's like no, because he knew me and understood me, and it was I, I was I had to pass through that. Amen. But with that, this is the beautiful part. He says, "You know, David, I can't, I can't, I can't get you out of stuff, but I promise I will be here every single day, every moment with you, and I will do this time with you." Amen. And that's the thing with Christ: is when we're sick, if we lose our health, if we're getting older, if we're going through tribulation. He doesn't take us out of that, but he promises to be with us through that. Amen. So. Always. God yeah. is good. God is good. Um, do we want to talk about our the community event that we're going to have? No. No? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. So I think that's it. Yeah. That'll be it, yeah. guys. Yeah. So Great. God bless you. Um, remember the Zoom uh, Who Are You seminar. Uh, make sure if you're not part of that, make sure you ask, request something. Um, email us at houseofrestchurchstaff 
at gmail.com. If you do that, I will put you on the Zoom list class. Um, if you are um, already connected with us through the church, you know that number we always share, then you're automatically going to get an invite. Okay. Yeah, automatically. So, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you become part of the Zoom and class. And do they know that number to the text? To text that number, you got to text H O R C at 209 400 9725. When you text H O R C, which stands for House Arrest Church, you will receive a text back with a link. And on that link, you just click onto it. And all you're going to do is fill out a connect card. The connect card is simply your name your phone number, your email, and what that does is sends it right back to us. We put you in the database and we're able to at least keep you updated with the sermons, the Bible studies, and special things like this like this uh, seminar that we're gonna be having. And on top of that, it gives us an opportunity to be able to call you one-on-one, -on -one, at mm -hmm. least, you know, to say hello, get to know you, um, just to talk to you. I think, you know, David's been able to, you know, really follow up because I work. David's been able to follow up a little bit more and talk to people. And, and I've been able to sit down with him and be able to hear your voices. And we just love that because it, what it does, it just builds a relationship and it just builds that fellowship that we so need. Um, so let's keep that going, you guys. Let's, you know, message that number, text message it. All right, guys. All right. See you later. We love you guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.